You've tuned into Inspire FM and you're listening to the Quranic Reflections show uh, with your host Amar Faz and I'm here today with Sheikh Nuruddin Rashid. So inshallah today we will be addressing the topic of diet and exercise and the importance of it in Islam inshallah. Um, so firstly uh, I'd like to introduce it by speaking about why we actually have decided to speak about diet and exercise and why it's important to us as Muslims in particular. So I'll start with a translation of uh, a, an ayah from the Quran in Surah Al-Baqarah, ayah number 208, uh, which translates as, O ye who believe, enter into Islam wholeheartedly. Now from this ayah indicates the holistic nature of Islam. And we also have a hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari where the Prophet Sallallahu says that your body has a right over you. So inshallah with that I'd like to hand it over to Sidi to try and explain a bit more about this ayah and why we're speaking about this topic which is of such importance to us. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Rabbana anzil alayna min barakatik wa rahmatik ya rahman rahimeen Waj'alna min as-salihin mukhlasin mukhlasin ya qawi wa ya'mateen So it's a very important subject inshallah ta'ala and a very useful introduction that in Islam we uh, look at all aspects of human life and we have guidance alhamdulillah for all aspects of human life so not just the spiritual and not just with regards to our belief and the sacred law and such things but a great deal of importance is given to a diet and uh, the food we consume and to exercise and inshallah these things we're going to address today uh, the hadith alluded to at the beginning and this hadith is in Sahih al-Bukhari I'll quote it in a little bit more detail inshallah ta'ala uh, this refers to uh, one of the sahaba and this uh, kind of hadith we have repeated when we look at the hadith literature the Prophet Sallallahu saying words like this indeed your body has a right over you indeed your eye has a right over you indeed your family has a right over you we find this um, in many many hadith and the Prophet Sallallahu said this to a number of different Sahaba um, and this is going to give us an indication as to why in this particular case the Prophet Sallallahu was speaking to Sayyidina uh, Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As radiallahu ta'ala anhu a young Sahabi um, and who became one of the great ulama of Islam the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Ya Abdullah alam ukhbar annaka tasum al-nahar wa taqum al-layl oh, Abdullah was I not informed that you fast the day and you stand during the night referring to what referring to the fact that Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As he used to fast every day and he used to stand all night in Salah, Nafal Salah, we're not speaking about the five daily prayers, obviously those are obligatory, but just speaking about Nafal Salah, to spend all night worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Nafal Salah. He said, Bala ya Rasulullah, he said, yes, O Messenger of Allah, I do. The Prophet said, Fala taf'al sum wa aftir wa qum wa nam, fa inna li jasadika alayka haqqa. The Prophet said, don't do so, sum wa aftir, fast, and uh, some days refrain from fasting fast and refrain from fasting and stand for prayer and also sleep uh, here uh, this is something very very important the prophet وسلم, even in something as important as ritual worship the prophet وسلم, taught moderation okay here the prophet وسلم, didn't say don't fast at all other than the fard fast in ramadan no the prophet وسلم, said after fast mm -hmm. and then have certain days where you don't fast do mm -hmm. both they don't go to one extreme or the other. They mm -hmm. don't be, uh, and some people misquote these hadith, or you know, sorry, uh, don't not necessarily misquote them, but uh, don't put them in there, or don't understand them correctly and present them in a way which is wrong. They'll quote hadith like this to try to say to people, you know, you should really forget nafal fasting or you know uh, nafal salah or what have you. This is not the point. The Prophet sallallahu was speaking to somebody who was fasting every single day. And the Prophet ﷺ said, fast and then refrain as well. Okay, So it's not to be taken in one extreme or the opposite. Not to be taken in the extreme where a person, you know, has no interest whatsoever in nafal fast. No, we should, uh, inshallah ta'ala, we should engage in nafal fasting. But the Prophet ﷺ was saying both, do this and this. Wa qum wa 
and stand in the Hajjad prayer but also sleep and then the point we're getting to فَإِنَّ لِجَسَدِكَ عَلَيْكَ حَقَّهِ Indeed your body has a right over you and from this hadith and the various others and ayat of the Quran the scholars they declared that it is an obligation upon a, a person upon the Muslim to take care of his body it's an obligation. It's a religious obligation. It's not simply up to him. If he takes care of his body, he will benefit. And if he doesn't, or if he's only damaging himself, he's only harming himself, you know, this is just detrimental to him. No, this is a religious obligation. And a person who doesn't take care of himself or herself, a Muslim who doesn't take care of himself or herself, is considered to be committing a grave crime. Not mm. taking care of oneself. So this is incredibly important to understand from the offset that to take care of oneself is a religious obligation. Just like the prayer is a religious obligation and to fast in Ramadan and to pay zakah and such things, they're religious obligations. This is a very, very important religious obligation and the body is seen as a, uh, or health is seen as a, uh, the body no doubt, and a good health is seen as a huge favor and blessing mm. of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And th this is how it should be treated. Uh, فَإِنَّ لِجَسَدِكَ عَلَيْكَ حَقَّ وَإِنَّ لِعَيْنِكَ عَلَيْكَ حَقَّ Then the Prophet ﷺ said, Indeed, your eye has a right over you. Meaning mm -hmm. what? Meaning sleep sufficiently. Mm -hmm. okay? And again, the ulama, they said that this hadith <coughs> should be understood uh, uh, according to the, uh, the moderation the Prophet ﷺ was teaching. Don't sleep so little that you can't function well. And don't sleep so much that you're wasting your days. You're wasting your life. Okay, because uh, this life that we have is incredibly important. We want to make the most of it. So don't just sleep so much that you're wasting uh, your time and your life. But at the same time, don't sleep so little that you don't take care of yourself. وَإِنَّ لِزَوْجِكَ عَلَيْكَ حَقَّ And indeed your spouse has a right over you. You need to spend time with the spouse. He's fasting every day. He's uh, worshipping all night. When does he spend time with his family? Mm. No. And the hadith continues, and at the end of the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ encourages him uh, to fast uh, three days a month. And mm -hmm. this is part of the sunnah. The Prophet ﷺ used to teach sahaba to fast three days a month as a nafal fast. Um, and there were other uh, methodologies which we're going to speak about later on, inshallah ta'ala, with regards to the fast itself. So <clears throat> this is incredibly important. The Prophet ﷺ, and what we're going to focus on, obviously, is a point. Inna li jasadika alayka haqqa. Indeed, your body has a right over you. And with regards to food and diet, the first right, obviously, and what's incredibly important is to eat halal. To understand what halal is and to know the difference between halal and haram food and to consume halal food. And uh, this we have, um, uh, obviously, this is repeated again and again in Quran and Hadith. But I wanted to quote a Hadith of the Prophet ﷺ in Sahih Muslim, uh, where the Prophet ﷺ goes into a little bit of detail. He says, أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ طَيِّبٌ لَا يَقْبَلُ إِلَّا طَيِّبًا Allah, in, O people, indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is tayyib. Tayyib translates as good and pure and has these meanings. Mm. لا يقبل إلا طيب. He doesn't accept except that which is good and pure. وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ أَمَرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ بِمَا أَمَرَ بِهِ الْمُرْسَلِينَ And indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the believers with, what he, with the same thing he commanded the messengers, the mursaleen. فقال, now the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam quotes uh, uh, an ayah from the Quran from Surah Al-Mu'mineen. Mu'minun, ayah 51. يَا أَيُّهَا الرُّسُلُ كُلُوا مِنَ الطَّيِّبَاتِ وَعْمَلُوا صَالِحَا إِنِّي بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ عَلِيمٌ And uh, the translation of the ayah, O messengers, eat from that which is tayyib. The, the word uh, halal is not mentioned here. The word tayyib is mentioned. And this is how the scholars understood it. They said tayyib here means halal. Eat that which is tayyib, which is halal. وَعْمَلُوا صَالِحًا And do good deeds. إِنِّي بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ عَلِيمٌ Indeed, I am well aware of what you do. And then the Prophet ﷺ quoted another, another ayah. يَا أَيُّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُلُوا مِنَ الطَّيِّبَاتِ مَا رَزَقَنَاكُمْ Surah Baqarah, ayah number 172. Um, o you who believe, eat from the tayyib that we have provided for you. So here the, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was speaking about uh, consuming halal and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala referred to it as tayyib. The hadith continues, ثُمَّ ذَكَرَ رَجُلْ يَطِيرُ السَّفَرْ أَشْعَثْ أَغْبَرْ and then the Prophet ﷺ mentioned a person who was traveling 
and he was dishevelled and covered in dust. Yamudu yadayhi ila sama. He puts up his hands towards the sky to make dua. Ya Rabb, Ya Rabb, he says, O oh Lord, O oh Lord. The point here is, uh, these are certain situations where a person is, uh, generally speaking, dua is more likely to be accepted. Like, a, as we know from the Sunnah, a person who is traveling, such a person's dua is more likely to be accepted. Ash'ath, Aghbar, okay, like people are in Hajj. The Prophet Sallallahu spoke about Hajj and... Uh, you know how people are kind of disheveled and such things in the hajj there are certain limitations that they have can't use scent you know can't uh, clip their nails and certain things that are prohibitions they have in ihram so this is similar to a state of a person in hajj okay because so busy with worship doesn't have uh, time to take care of his, his aspects of his upkeep mm -hmm. so the point is this is somebody whose dua is far more likely to be accepted normally than anybody else then the prophet sallallahu said ya muddu yadayhi ila sama ya rab ya rab he puts up his hands towards the sky and he says oh, oh lord oh lord wa mat'amuhu haram wa mashrabuhu haram wa malbasuhu haram and his food is haram and his drink is haram and his clothing is haram wa ghudhiya bil haram and he's been nourished on the haram fa anna yustajabu li dhalik and from where is this prayer going to be accepted Mm. And the Prophet is a rhetorical question. And the point is, this prayer is not going to be accepted. So this is important. This is why many scholars, they point this out. One of the things that will prevent a person's dua being accepted is <coughs> having uh, haram uh, food or haram drink or haram clothing or what have you. And the, the scholars, again, this is important. That's something they pointed out, which is not something we're going to focus on today. Mm. Um, but it's important to at least mention it is that they said, Haram food doesn't just relate to the nature of the food itself, mm. but it also relates to the income. If somebody has haram income, and even if you buy, say, an apple with it, apple is halal, no doubt about it, but buys an apple with it and eats it, this food is going to be haram for him. Why? Because he purchased it with something haram, and this is, comes. they said, this comes under the hadith. Mm. Now, so, uh, so, to summarize some points from this, first of all, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the ayah, كُلُوا مِنَ الطَّيِّبَاتِ وَعْمَلُوا صَالِحًا And many scholars, they commented on this, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, eat of that which is pure mm. and do good deeds. So they said there's a relationship between halal, uh, uh, halal food and consuming halal food and doing good actions. If a person is eating haram or problematic, doubtful food, then this may well affect their actions. So this is something that they uh, took from this, they derived from this, that not only with regard to the dua, unlikely to be accepted, but also the actions. If a person is eating halal, inshallah, more likely to do good deeds. If a person is eating the haram, eating that which is haram, then it's, um, it's going to be much more difficult for this person to do. Uh, to do good deeds um, and also this very practice of eating eating that which is halal uh, the way it's presented here by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also in the ayah by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is that this is something which the Prophets or the messengers of Allah they were uh, obliged and it was emphasized upon them that this is uh, very much a, 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 a practice of the Prophets of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and it being the practice of the Prophets of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala commanded the Ummah to follow suit. So this is the first point that uh, care should be taken with regards to halal food. Mm. Yeah. So Sidi, you've spoken about some of the uh, the spiritual harms of yeah. uh, of not eating halal food. Uh, I mean, from this could we also deduce that halal food <laughs> is related to healthy food as well? Yeah, yeah. Healthy food is also very important. Right. Um, because you may have many foods which in and of themselves are halal right. but they're not particularly healthy mm. you see and this is important and it relates to what we what uh, we started off speaking about is that the body a person the body is a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it has a right over the individual for right. somebody to for example you know eat fatty foods or eat foods which are known uh, by agreement of you know the dietitians or physicians or what have you they're known to be harmful to one's health especially mm -hmm. in large quantities for somebody to say i'm going to eat this is halal there's no religious issue with it i can eat it i can eat it every day i can eat as much as i like there's no issue with it religious this is wrong mm. yeah. the point is you know as muslims we're we're obliged to follow the experts in any given science or any given aspect of life 
uh, and with regards to food and the benefit or the harm of the food uh, where is this going to come from no doubt aspects of it in the Quran and Hadith and there are those we consider absolute facts no doubt about it mm -hmm. but also we give importance to uh, the scholars of those sciences the physicians or the dietitians or what have you and when they say that the too much consuming too much of this or consuming too much of that is harmful and certainly when it's agreed upon uh, amongst uh, the people of uh, uh, of those sciences then yes we have a, a religious duty and it becomes a religious obligation so mm -hmm. you know if you say speak about uh, the, the the effects of consuming too much sugar and how this is very detrimental to a person's health mm. or too much fat or too much of anything really but certain things they point out more so than others like salt and like sugar and such things so as Muslims this is something we should understand it's important this is one of the reasons we're speaking about this today we should understand that not only is it a personal thing that personally mm. to have uh, you know to have a healthy body this is important to us but it's a religious obligation religiously we have to give consideration to this so if you know even if something in and of itself is halal but we're being told that you know you can only consume this amount more than this is going to be detrimental or severely detrimental we have to give that consideration absolutely so Sidi, just touching on some of the harms of eating what are now deemed as unhealthy foods and yeah. you know upkeeping a, an unhealthy lifestyle which is void of nutritious healthy foods and void of uh, sufficient exercise required yeah. for our bodies as well i mean we know that th these include such a nutrient deficiency and even chronic diseases and one which is rice especially amongst our south asian communities such yeah. as diabetes and heart disease and yeah. you know um uh, e even uh, even tumors and cancers and, mm. uh, and and these type of diseases can crop from this as well uh, and, and and obesity is quite rife as well yeah. so i mean i understand that from what we've mentioned so far these kind of disease, diseases haven't explicitly been mentioned or any yeah. uh, ex explicit or specific health or nutritional advice been given mm. but uh, what one would like to think that you can relate this back to the hadith of uh, where, the, where the prophet gives us advice that your body has a right yes, over you no doubt about yeah. it no doubt about it. And an ayah of the Holy Quran also comes to mind. وَلَا تُلْقُوا بِأَيْدِيكُمْ إِلَى التَّهْلُكَ In Surah Baqarah, ayah number 195. That do not cast yourselves into destruction with, a, with your own hands. Mm. And this is the point. In Islam, we are clearly uh, prohibited from, you know, causing ourselves harm. So again, even this is a very important point that you raise and really worth emphasizing a great deal. Halal food is incredibly important. Okay? But even uh, what we should also give consideration to is even halal food that can be harmful. Too much mm. of it can be harmful. And we're going to speak generally about not overeating shortly, inshallah. But yeah. even you know, uh, specific to certain things that uh, may be detrimental to one's health. And as you mentioned, it is a sad reality that often, you know, they quote a lot of statistics that um, people from the, the subcontinent or uh, you know the, the the dominant Muslim community here is from that part of the the world. People with that kind of ethnic uh, ethnic origin in this country they tend to have a lot of diseases and a lot of ill health and mm. don't give much consideration to diet and such things. And this is a, uh, this is sad, and this really should not be the case because as Muslims, you know, we as you mentioned already, we give great importance to. Um, the fact that the body has a right we give great importance to halal food and we should give great importance to healthy food mm. uh, absolutely no doubt about it yeah. um, so just going into uh, a bit more detail about the prophetic uh, guidance in terms of our in terms of our diet and in terms of what we eat and how we eat as well uh, I just um, wanted to mention about uh, a, a surah uh, an, an ayah from surah al-a'raf of uh, ayah number 31 where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to eat and drink but don't be extravagant yeah. so I just wanted to start off with this and hand over to you to try and kind of explain uh, the, the importance of maintaining uh, a, a healthy diet yeah so again this ayah of the holy quran uh, is explained by the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with regards to moderation 
and yeah. eat and drink. We eat and drink, and these are favors from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we do this, and we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his favors. But moderation is, an, uh, you know, is a central teaching in Islam. With regards to everything, we just spoke about sleep, moderation, not too little, not too much. Even the Prophet sallallahu had to teach the Sahaba moderation in worship. And for people in our time, we need the opposite. We need to be encouraged to do more ritual worship. We barely do our obligations. Okay, But with the Sahaba, they used to do a great amount, as we spoke about in Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As and how he used to worship. You know, and So the Prophet ﷺ even taught that with regards to ritual worship, even with regards to reciting the Qur'an. The Prophet ﷺ, uh, in some hadith told the Sahaba to uh, the minimum number of days they should take to finish the Qur'an is three days. You see, and you have others besides. So moderation is something very, very important. So this is the point. Eat and drink, yes. And these are favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but moderation. Moderation is incredibly important. And we have a sound hadith of the Prophet sallallahu which speaks about food and speaks about, you know, limiting one's intake of food. And this is obviously, the food is halal, no doubt about it. But even with halal food, the Prophet sallallahu you know, gave us this guidance not to overeat. So this hadith I'm going to quote from the Muslim of Imam Ahmed. It's a Hassan hadith, it's a strong hadith. You always also have slight variants of this hadith in other books, mm. Tirmidhi, Ibn Majah and others besides. So the, here the Prophet وسلم, he said, uh, The son of Adam does not fill a vessel worse than the stomach. حَسْبُ بْنِ آدَمْ أُكَلَاتْ يُقِمْنَ سُلْبَةً It is sufficient for the son of Adam to have a few uh, morsels to keep his back straight. فَإِنْ كَانَ لَا مَحَالَةً And if there's, you know, if he must go beyond that, فَثُلُثٌ طَعَامٌ وَثُلُثٌ شَرَابٌ وَثُلُثٌ لِنَفْسِهِ أو لِنَفَسِهِ Now, uh, then... If he must go beyond that, then a third for food, a third for drink, and a third for, in this narration, for himself. In most narrations, you have لنفسي, not لنفسي, لنفسي, which means for his breath, you need to leave a third empty. So uh, the point here, and this is the real, uh, what we should really give a lot of uh, emphasis to. The Prophet ﷺ started off by saying, that just a few morsels which will keep his back straight are sufficient for him. Mm. And this, is, this was the starting point with the Prophet ﷺ, that food intake should really be limited to the, to the need. Mm. Yeah. Shouldn't really go beyond that. What you need for uh, a healthy body, that's it. This is how it should be. And again, you know, this is something I can't speak about in detail, um, and it's for uh, experts in uh, di uh, in diet and such thing, uh, and the physicians for them to comment on. But I've often heard people say that most people, especially in the West, and I suppose uh, throughout the world, uh, sorry, much uh, many countries in the East as well, um, people are eating far, far, far more than they actually need to eat. Mm. Now. And then when I was in Syria, the, the, some of the scholars they used to you know, mention and kind of semi-jokingly uh, semi kind of saying that, you know, uh, a lot of the physicians, they say that uh, people only need to consume about an eighth of what they're consuming or mm. a tenth of what they're consuming or a third or a quarter or what have you. They'd mention these different mm. fractions and they would say, you know, like uh, a, a quarter of what they're consuming is for themselves. What are the other three quarters for? The other three quarters are for the physicians to keep them in business, the doctors. Because mm. yeah, they're going to get unwell, they're going to have to go to the doctor, and then the doctor, uh, they, they, they don't have, you know, uh, free health care, so they're going to have to pay for this health care. So this is the point, yeah, even in the Muslim world, the scholars, they used to comment on this, that people are eating far more than they need to. Then the Prophet ﷺ went further, in, uh, if he must go beyond that, then a third for food, a third for drink, and a third for uh, for himself or for uh, to leave a third empty to help him to to breathe well inshallah so the point is even if a person is going to go beyond this there's still some control there's still mm. some limitation inshallah uh, so Sidi, yeah you're speaking about how um, 
people eat more than they need to. I mean, uh-huh. people have even actually figured out that the body has this base metabolic rate, which is just basically the amount of calories you need yeah. uh, and that your body naturally burns in order to keep you going and how we eat so much more than this. And yeah. especially if we're not exercising on top of that, it's just, you know, it's just uh, uh, it's just pointing to diseases, you know, yeah. such as what we mentioned earlier. Subhanallah. Yeah. Um, okay, inshallah, uh, we'll just stop there for a short break and we'll be back after. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam.